Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, so today, the course is MMPH J04, the first semester paper, or uh, specialization of HRA. Title of the project uh, core, uh, core titles is uh, your uh, industrial and environment relations. Uh, today we have to discuss about uh, unit number four and five of block one. So. Second, I'm going to unit number four. Yeah. So labor administration in India. In this unit, um, you have to see what are the contents of this particular unit. That is your constitutional provisions, labor administration machineries, attached offices of the Ministry of Labor and Employment, autonomous organizations, labor administration in states, unorganized sector workers. So in unit number four, the contains basically the constitutional and what are the requirements are there. And the particular deployment, what are the role and the responsibility uh, in terms of your industrial relations that is already uh, saturated, I mean the uh, strategy rules and regulations and the now, uh, what are the responsibilities, role, everything are defined. So, first things here are uh, the constitutional provisions as to the Indian uh, uh, laws that the labor administration is defined with the ILO Convention number 150. That the public administration activities in the field of the national labor policy. The governments create the labor administration machinery to make the organized efforts to fulfill their responsibilities towards labor and the workers. It is therefore important that each country uh, should maintain a robust and dynamic labor administration system responsible for all aspects of the national labor policy, formulation and the implementation. That is actually this is defined by the ILO. International labor organizations, so all the countries should maintain some sort of laws where the uh, welfare for the laborers and workers they can move from uh, one country to other country. There should be uh, in not should not be any problems, and plus of the basic needs that also to be. And what type of administration is required? Uh, that is that part is there defined. And that is. In the convention number 150, as per Now, labor um, uh, again, the meeting of experts of the labor administrations held in Geneva in October 1973, in the Geneva meeting, that time it was felt that, in the, uh, it was felt that labor administration should include various functions that include in the form. So, during the convention, during the meeting, it has been decided the following should be there. The labor protections that they are developing the standards of the working conditions, health and security, safety and terms of the employment, including wages and social security, that part should be there. This is based on the protection purpose for the labor and work that should be well protected. That is one of the uh, rather, I can say these all are the objectives, including inclusion means that is basically the objectives. Uh, B, uh, second is the labor inspections. Because inspection is also required if things are moving in the right direction or not, and if any implementation or any modification required, the inspection basically uh, is required for the control the things, and at the same time, you can take a feedback also. Labor relations. That also to see is a at par the uh, standard or not that labor relations are in uh, in the developed conditions or not. So then D is the employment objectives. That that should be clear. What are the objectives of the employment department? That objective has to be clear. This is, and that is there. It should be uh, legal assistance, the part of training. That should be clear. Then legal assistance 
suppose if something is problem with arbitration or any case or where the uh, petitions to be submitted or if required some of the lawyer or something vice versa employment side or employee side so everything has to be uh, the legal assistance has also to be here uh, then educational uh, functions also another objectives are we provide in this in the the resume decide in the what is geneva program meeting then according to the constitution of india the enactment and the administration of labor laws in the responsibility to both union and the state governments so responsibility should be in the both central central government and in my mean union and government and the state governments so everybody has to follow these constitutions so there are uh, three lists one the union list concurrent list and the shared uh, list the constitution in which these various subjects have been divided the following some of the following are the principal matters of the related to labor uh, innovation in each of this on the list so what are the innovations are there that have been listed the as per the union list there should be participation in international conferences association and other bodies in implementing decisions made there number 2 is the code code contracts including the hospitals are uh, connected there there way the cements and mining hospitals so and all the other be union list so the from the from the government has to be provided regulation of the labor and safety in mines and outfields and oil fields there should be a separate safety rules are there because the mines there are more safety is required more rules and regulations and the protections for the labors because they have to go in the underground and there are so many provisions are there then any industrial discourse connecting with the union uh, relations the uh, employees so that is another uh, point that is the in the list then union agencies and the institutions for the professional professional for the training technical training the promotion for the social studies research that part is the part of the union agencies professional and professional technical studies for the i iti there are lot of courses are there Trade course, then some electricians, turner, fitters, different skill development programs uh, for the short term. All are these basically the part of you. The agencies are the really technical institutions. Uh, this is part of the uh, union agencies are there to be. The inquiries, surveys, and the statistics and the uh, statistics for the purpose of any. of the meter meters in the list so if any inquiries are required or survey is required any data basically the data is the product part also part of the list now concurrent list here actually the economic and the social planning number one trade unions industrial and the labor disputes then uh, society social security and social insurance employment and unemployment for this your labor welfare including the condition of work provident fund employees liability uh, workman's compensation even in the gratuity also uh, in liability and old age pensions pension scheme if any and the maternity benefits which should be six months or one hour extended uh, leave period Um, without pay, with pay, all these things are um, the packages. What are the compensation package? That is uh, the one of the uh, item number four in the list. Then five is the vocational and technical training of the labor. That is the uh, in the um, like that as I told you something. 
is also in the uh, concurrently so also will be there. Then your uh, factories and the inquiries and the statistics for the purposes of any of the measures specified in the concurrence list in the uh, state list. Now your state list where it should be a public order number one number two public health and sanitation hospitals and dispensaries etc should be there so all things everything are basically the administrations where the labor are working they are for the for the, for the benefit of the workers and the laborers they should simply work for that all these things list has been prepared relief of the uh, disabled and the uh, unemployable what type of relief should be given if any uh, rehabilitation relief that kind will be some uh, 10 days salary or 20 days salary or some of the incomes of some food or benefit so that has to be uh, unemployable suppose there are no uh, employment is there so there is some, some stipend or something unemployment um, amount should be amount should be there so that they can survive or you can go to for the, for the young generation those who are in the educated or the trained skilled laborers that has to be so that type of things are given is the all are in uh, state list state has to see the particular their employment now the Ministry of Labor of Employment is at the top of the labor administration machinery. Now we are talking about the, what are the machineries are there, what are the, what should be the structure of these administration, labor administrations. In this machinery, this is headed by the government, that is the Ministry of uh, Labor and the Employment, uh, Employment, they are at the top of the administrations. It aims at the protect, protecting and safeguarding the interests of the workers and deprive the uh, disadvantages sections to society. So basic idea uh, is this, to safeguard the protection and the safeguard the uh, workers. Since uh, cordial industrial relations are important for the economy of the country, its purpose, its purpose is to create a healthy work environment. So healthy work, uh, work, uh, work environment is, is, primary, is a prime duty. Uh, for achieving the higher production and productivity. Since liberalization of the economy has accentuated the need of the labor of the industries, now why you are uh, uh, has to earn the knowledge and to skill development uh, by the ministries also with lot of schemes, lot of plans has been uh, sanctioned and is undergoing also. And it is already implemented and something uh, being to be implemented. A lot of development schemes because competitions. Since the liberalization, a lot of competition government has come, workforce are going to the abroad also. That should be at par the uh, world world class levels. So that's why this ministry has also taken a lot of steps uh, to develop the desired skills and get jobs. The ministry focuses on the vocational skill training and unemployment services. Another important objective of the government is the uh, provision of social security and the promotion of welfare to the labor force, both the organizations, both the, both the organized and unorganized sectors. As we know, are the organized sectors, there are some people up there, there are some guarantees uh, there, uh, there are some uh, policies are there, everything are in this structure. So that is we can say these are organized sectors. But those are some of the things are not organized. People are coming and joining their contract basis worker. They don't have any maybe they don't have any government fund, they don't have any benefits, that type of things. So seasonal basis they are working and doing but some of the lot of unorganized sectors are also there. But everything are covered by the labor with uh, administration. When you are talking about the benefits, the uh, national levels, all the levels, they are also part of the uh, beneficial that activities. Even though the particular they are not in organized sectors, 
still uh, they are giving some sort of protection, some sort of uh, the government has given it the type of opportunity and objectives also. These objectives are sure to be achieved through the enactment and the implementation of the various labor laws which regulate the terms and conditions of the service and the employment of the workers. The state governments are also competent to enact uh, the legislations as labor is a subject to in the concurrent list under the constitution of India. The ministry functions with the help of its various offices there. Now, now we are talking about the attachment to offices in the Ministry of Labor and the Employment Offices. What the Ministry of Labor and, and some sort of accelerates some of the offices and other, and other support systems are attached. Some of the offices are there. We are talking about the above the things. Headed by the Ministry of Labor, that is the prime uh, control. The Ministry of Labor and Employment, under the Ministry of Labor and Employment, some of the other institutions or offices are attached. I mean, they are the responsibility are uh, distributed. So number one, the Chief Labor Commissioners, citizens, yeah. Chief Labor Commissioners, he has some responsibility. He has to dispose some of the works. Then organizations of the Chief Labor or uh, commissions, commissioners, also known as the Central Industrial Relations Commission of India, is an apex organization in the country that is responsible for maintaining the harmonious industrial relations, mainly in the sphere of central government. In pursuance of the recommendations of the Royal Commissioners in the Labour of India, the organizations were set up in the 1945. Before implementation, the organizations gradually expanded with increase in the number of labor legislations and increased industrial activity in the post uh, independence period in the country. Since after uh, 1947, there's a lot of activities uh, that has been increased. Initially, they have started some of the things so that. And money can be maintained, interested relations, people can work together, some sort of things has been there. And that there is by the Central Industrial Relations Machinery, that is our uh, chief con uh, labor commission and that way. Now, in order to secure better uh, solutions, because uh, we have to see what so, particular one such uh, area of the uh, head, they cannot control of everything. So, for the consolidation purposes <clears throat> and for the preventions, the medi uh, mediations, and the more effective enforcement of the labor laws, the scheme of the further strengthening of the central industry relations, machinery was approved under the sixth five year plan. So, Gradually, it has now increased, and gradually, the lot of the things are covered up. And, uh, so, uh, as per the result, what happened? The three more regions with headquarters one is in Guwahati, Chandigarh, and Bangalore were created during 1981. This has been created, this office. And the headquarters are region wise headquarters are being uh, created. Why is this created? Because further strengthening the relationships of the workers all over the regions. The three more new regions, the headquarters at the Ahmedabad, New Delhi, and Cochin were created under the seventh. Actually, what happened? Every uh, the planning, I mean the five-year planning, as you know, the sixth planning, something has been added. In the seventh planning, again during the five years, some another additional um, locations, some headquarters 
updated. So gradually it is now increased. So first one in the Guwahati, Chandigarh and Bangalore created during the 1981-82. Then subsequently in the seventh plan, that is in the 1987-88, another three headquarters has been promoted. That is one headquarters, that is Ahmedabad, New Delhi and Kochi were created under the seventh plan. Two new regions also created, that is in the Dehradun and the Raipur, with the headquarters at Uttaranchal and uh, Chhattisgarh respectively were created in the year 2005. So what we are, we are getting from here? Main thing, first is your um, 81 to 80, 82, that time it was created in the six plans. And then after that, in the 2000, uh, 1987 to 88, that time, another three has been included. And 2005, your Uttaranchal and Chitika there are two. One is your Dehradun, there are two, and there are two. So, create. So, all these things are created. Again, I am just repeating for the purpose of the strengthening of the relationships, strengthening of the industry relations. This is basically all of the basic history of these things, how it has happened, and who are the responsible. That's what we are discussing in unit number four. So functions important functions are for this uh, central level. Uh, the CLC includes that is a basic central uh, labor commissions, prevention and the settlement of the industrial disputes. The CRIM ensures that harmonious industrial relations in the central sphere service through interventions, mediations, and the correlations, co coalitions in industrial disputes with a few to bring about settlements of the disputes. Then implementation of the settlement and awards, if any uh, awards are also to be given. That provision is also there. Interventions in situations of threatened strikes and lockouts with a view to advert them. It is very important because if the situation is adverse, it is not in the for the benefit for the industries and uh, not for the uh, workers, the labor such. So that thing. That, that administration, that machineries, the government machineries, in terms of your weather locations, as the headquarters officers, they are interviewing the things. And they can, the situation, they can hand, try to handle it. If some type of threatens are coming there for the strike and other things, the lockout situation is there, it may be possible. Maybe uh, lockout now will come the company, uh, owners are declared, it's not lockout. If it is possible without the lockout, can company run or not? Uh, even though the profit are not marginal, so anyway, lot of factors are there. So the labor administrations can intervene the things and sort out the things. So that that provision is also there. They can also intervene and strike may be postponed or strike may be diluted or any strikes can be across the table, they can negotiate. So they are also in there as a working as a support system. Enforcement of labor laws and the rules made there under. Because another wing, another objectives or the, the rules are there. Whatever the rule are there, that has to be implemented. So that's the enforcement department is there. Uh, in the labor laws, they have to time to time, they have to see, they have to visit their industries, different uh, laws, the laws are followed by or not, or if any lack was or look, any coma or something problems are there, why it has happened, they can also solve it or take a feedback. Then, we see uh, judicial functions, the officers of the 
CIRM performed the C judicial functions under the various labor methods. If required, they can also give you some of the orders you can do before going to any uh, labor court or something. So they are the uh, from they can see situations they can again give a notice or something, they can have a give some order also in very in critical situations. Verification of trade union machines. That is also another job is there that uh, that machinery, uh, labor employment machineries can observe. Because there are some certain rules are there. Before making the trade union, uh, any union, some verification there, there should be an employee of this particular, this should not be the outsider, proper ID card, other card, whatever the rules are there, documentation has to be complete. Uh, there a uh, certain period of working is required, then only you can take a membership. So, and, and this much strength should be there, then only the trade union membership can be achieved. So, the, offi the officers of the CIRM are required to conduct verifications of the trade union memberships. Verification, the, what the things are they have to do? Thereby, Verification of trade union memberships for the recognitions under the code of discipline as directed by the Ministry of Labor and the Employment or by order of High Court, Supreme Court, time to time when the order they have given, that has to be followed. Statutory verifications for the appointment of workmen uh, directed in the nationalized and the state banks, there some of the verifications is there. General verification of the central trade unions organizations by the checking uh, order records and the sampling. They can then go there and see the based on the records, they have to take some sampling and they can check it. Uh, it is already verified or not. Means they are followed the rules and regulations, the particular this, um, company, the organizations, they have followed this big sample. Director General of Mines Safety Director, General of Mines Safety uh, in the Indian Regulatory Agency for the Safety in the Mines and the origin. These different laws are there, different uh, aspects specifically the mines safety. The mission of the uh, DGMS is to improve safety and the healthy standards, practices, and the performance in the mining industry. And upstream petroleum industry by implementing what are the things are so proactive safety and safety strategies. Strategies continuous improvement of process, effective use of resources, commitment, and the professional behavior in this personnel. So, uh, this is all we are talking about the mines, mine safety. Autonomous uh, organizations, what are the autonomous, the autonomous organizations are in the ministry, they are also a part of the ministry, but uh, some responsibility are distributed, that is the employees, state insurance corporations, where the, if any employee or um, medicines or things of treatment or some compensation is required, that insurance corporations are providing, they have a, some uh, ESI also, they have tie up with some ESI hospitals where the employee can go and uh, take their treatment properly. So that some sort of arrangement are there. These employees, state insurance corporations. These are another autonomous organizations. Employees, power environment organizations. These are all are the, by the uh, industrial employment ministry and under the ministry of uh, labor ministry under. But they are individually, independently they are working and they are in turn helping to the main ministry. Power in front organizations, there are some EPS, EPSO, lot of pension schemes are there and the power in front scheme is also there. So that for the near future, in the super emissions, in the retirement time, employee can be benefited. Uh, that uh, part is there. Central Board of uh, 
for workers education uh, that is also there for because uh, the workers children uh, child sir uh, they are to uh, properly take care the education should be at par the uh, our indian uh, rules they should uh, give a provide a minimum knowledge they should give the school level knowledge is as per constitutional right they all everybody should be getting education so that part of part of this thing the central so then um, employees provisions are there employees for public participation tender a central uh, board of workers education central board of workers education okay. then they are uh, giving the national labor institute where the labor can be skilled they can go there and studying employees sitting strength scheme uh, of india so so many uh, programs are there in schemes also there these are all are uh, autonomous organizations esi epfo epfo cb cbo w education then your national level institutions so all are autonomous autonomous organizations they are in turn helping to uh, employees in this territory employees state insurance scheme, uh, scheme of indian employees that, that state insurance india is a multi dimensional uh, social security system created to provide social economic protection to worker populations and their dependents covered under the scheme there is a some of it called scheme is there that is the covered so labor administration in the states and uh, to see the unorganized sector also we have to see it now um, employees state insurance scheme the state insurance scheme of the india is a multinational scheme and provider employees for in for organizations the the constitution of india under the directive principles of state policy provides that the state shall within the limits of the economic capacity make exact uh, effective provisions for securing the right to work to education and to public assistance in the cases of the unemployed old age and sickness and disabled and undeserved one so this is the your portion in the problem this is the term unorganized workers as we define now it has it will be defined in our uh, in the social security act has been prepared in 2008 Where it is defined, who are the uh, unorganized? So, as a home-based worker, self-employed worker, or a wage worker in the unorganized sectors, and includes a worker in the organized sector who is not covered by any of the acts mentioned in Section Two of the Act, the uh, Employees Compensation Act, nineteen twenty-three. That we have like then the industrial disputes act, the industrial state insurance insurance act, the employees provident fund and the miscellaneous provision act, and the maternity benefit act, and the and the payment of gratuity act, welfare. Um, so all these things are are already different different acts are there, so so that it will be covered. other measures for the managing the organizations workers are as follows some of the that is one of the key structures some that the portal is there some portal some portal is there the institution of the unorganized workers from uh, across the country for the launching to the 6 august 2021 
um, I think, in fact, this from coming in view of these things, so that should get us some benefits. So this portal will help build a comprehensive national database of the unorganized workers in the country. What are the provident fund? Now the unique feature is there if the their provident fund is being deducted or not, is really um, deposited or not in their when when account the unique unique uh, numbers. So they can simply give a message or through this portal, you can go there and there if they put their numbers, uh, employee number or some sort of code numbers, then you can get the uh, view what is the going on. The really need is updated. So updated figures with an option. So this portal will help to build a comprehensive national database of unorganized workers in the country. The portal will prove to be a huge boost towards the last mile delivery of the welfare schemes for, for crores of the unorganized workers for more than 38 crore workers. 38 crore workers are benefited. They are within uh, these facilities and they can know where they are. The registration is totally free for the workers. They can register, there is no money is required. They can enroll these things. So this portal is one of the uh, meaningful portals. Pradhan Mantri Shyam Yogi uh, Manbhan, this is PM, SYM, Ranga, this is Yogi uh, Manbhan Yogi Jojana, this government scheme meant for old age protections and social security of unorganized uh, workers. There are lots of measures in the sector. We so are talking about the un unorganized sectors. What are the schemes? What are the uh, things are being launched and what is going on? Amadi Bina, Jujana, the workers in the unorganized workers will constitute uh, about 93 percent of the total workforce in the country. The government has been implementing some social security measures for certain occupational groups, uh, but the coverage in is very minimal. The majority of the workers are still without any social security coverage, uh, recognizing the need for providing the social security to these workers. The central government has introduced a bill in the parliament. Now, some of the global trends that you see. Industrial relations are affected by the social, as you know, the social, the political, economy, and cultural factors of the nations. So, due to differences in belief, different belief is their norms, assumptions, then corporate cultures, and national cultures of the different countries, the nature and the relationships between the employer workers varies from one country to another country and from one business to another. It is true because somebody is going to Dubai or the Middle East or in the African countries for work there. It really will be a problem because the language varies is one of the problems, cultural problems is also there, food habit is different. So their norms and reduction is also there. Some belief systems are also there, Christianity, then your uh, Muslims, Hindus, so Hinduism, so Buddhism. Uh, there is a lot of uh, cultural diversities also there, workforce. So, uh, somehow uh, it is a challenge. Somehow it should be a really challenge. So, between the employer and the workers, that's why sometimes uh, the relations are not up to the mark or maybe uh, some of the resistance are coming between because of this. So globalizations and the technological advancements have been instrumental in changing the nature of the industrial relations all over the world. So now the thing is this, 
because of the globalizations, because somehow people has to manpower us to go there in the other country to earn something or promoting. So it is also promoting that's the developing the skills of the workers so that they can go there in other countries, they can earn the money and they can save the incomes, the dollar in the country and so that the, the Indian economy can be developed. So it is vice versa. Individual improvements, government improvements. So, so that's why it is very, very much required to develop the relationships uh, in a very in a high level where the productivity can be made. So country uh, cultural programs, country to country activities are so that that uh, development is very much needed so that you know, workers can be habituated or accustomed, they can also follow, they can easily acceptable, uh, you can easily accept the, uh, their cultures also. And they can survive and happily they can do it. The role and the importance of the trade unions has declined in many countries over the time. Because nowadays the trade union they are not playing that particular that role. So with certain exceptions from the African and the Latin America countries where the membership increased, but uh, the factory is responsible for this including the structural changes in the economy, increasing competitiveness in business and the more accompanying management uh, endeavors to, to reduce labor cost to energy to emergence of the non-union enterprises in formulation of the economy and the following environment in the organization sector, particularly in the public sector, outsourcing of the jobs and fees in part in part time and the casual labor, casual workers, and changing the workforce comp comp compositions, including gender diversity. So all these things are the slow responses of the unions in the fast changing environment has also been a factor in their decline. Because the union has to take a lead part in this changing process. So in the country like Denmark, in Sweden and Belgium unions play in an important role in the labor related issues and therefore they have suffered less in any membership loss than in the other countries. So they are all developed, they are fastly, they are very much involved in this. The, uh, industrial trade union organizations are there. Again, is in a global conditions. We have to monitor these things. The International Confederation of the Free Trade Unions. So they are in a common body so that the, during the trade business, it should be free, there shouldn't be any ambiguities, there shouldn't be any complex, it should not be any complex and any simple procedures. So I see TFU is a sum of the unions body. They are in Kapkata, international. International Trade Union Conference. So ITUC is also again, uh, they have to see the welfare of the uh, welfare of the labors, not only in the particular their country, other countries. They are see the global transitions period when the workforce are going from one country to other country for the job, searching or doing the job. They can see some of the norms are fixed and not norms are then followed. Then trade union uh, confederations. Another is a South Asian Regional Trade Union Council. Different different uh, confederations, unions, councils are formed because of the their welfare of the welfare and or adjustment. When I, uh, the global union, it was formerly, it is formerly the union network uh, internationals, UNI, uh, they are the global, uh, global unions. They are also seen uh, in the global everything uh, are uh, at par with the standards of norm. 
So collective bargaining, uh, another part is there for the collective bargaining because uh, the, for the better relationships. So one of the major areas is the collective bargaining. There is a process for the negotiations between the independent unions and the workers and the employees um, to determine the terms and the conditions of the employment. Typically, wages and the working condition, time, cost, salary is okay or not, working times are really at part the standards and not, eight hours, whatever it is, break time, lunch time, the relations between the parties. So, these are the process. If it is not there, some loopholes are there, they can sit there, trade union representative. Uh, your uh, employees representative so all together they have to discuss it and they have to form it participation worker participation is important for the formulation of this thing. so the negotiation result in labor protections to workers and the legitimate agency of the trade it provides the government authorities with a tool of the regulation of the labor related issues which is determined by the direct uh, stockholders and can be tailored to their customers, circumstances among which the enforcement of the compliances with the minimum standards. So collective bargaining is viewed as a fundamental principle at work as recognized by the international community. So in the last time is very important collective bargaining is viewed as a fundamental principle at the work as a recognized person. So workers' participation is another aspect. Workers' participation in management is an essential ingredient of the industrial democracy. Workers' participation is also known as the your labor participation. You can see the labor participation. Or we can see the employee participation. Yes, you see, everything are different name but partners is same or rather I can say employee and employee there are two types employee we can say owner of this company we can say board member of the company because the based on the share part, uh, proportions they are ownership it may be a partnership business it may be a single uh, owners it may be a government or a military department. So, whatever the uh, things, employ, employers. So, it can be a government, it can be a state government, it can be a private, it can be an individual, whatever it is. Similarly, other way, the labor, workers. So, basically, they all are in the employee. So, you can do categories one of the employer, one of the employee. So, they are given relations approach that management part is very important. So, some set of rules are regulations to there, the labor management. That's why that ministry has developed and they are declaring time to time the different objectives, different norms. And all these things are then maintained by the other companies also. So traditionally, the concept of workers' participation in management, that is WPM, refers to participation to non-managerial employees in the decision-making process of the organization. So actually earlier, what happened? Just uh, maybe he has not involved in the that part from the union side, from the worker side. Somebody has come as a representative. And they are they are simply sitting in the meeting. What are the management has decided that there is no counter, there is no argument, there is no cross, nothing is this. But now this has slowly the concept has changed. Now the participation from the concerned uh, department officer, the labor, who is the particular the head of this particular section, he should come uh, in the meeting uh, during the management issue process because they can give it correct feedback what is the what is the going on what are the benefits are required really 
So on behalf of uh, union side, the representative also should be aware, should be knowledgeable, of particular that process. Not just for go to sitting and nothing to say is not a uh, not a purpose to speak. So this will be in the, in the decision making process, the participations, active participations is required. Or rather, we can say the labor participation. So, worker participation in the management implies the involvement of the workers in the decision making process in the enterprise. It is considered as a mechanism where the workers have an active involvement in the policy decisions, especially in the policy decision purposes. So, active involvement is very much. Now, workers' participation uh, participations in the decision making that the maximum uh, the democratic participation in the region, maximum employer employee collaborations. So, when we are taking any decision process, so there are some ratios will be there. This percentage of the proposals or ideas has to be uh, approved or has to be um, vetted by the someone well means to say it means when the decisions are making to be when in situations labors and the decisions they are also yes this is this thing is this decision is benefited for us for the employers employer sometimes employer is biased they are not focused on profit only but revenue earning, we have to focus on that. That should not happen. So that's why the, the maximum employer employee collaborations minimum state interventions. So state interventions should be less. And number four is the realization of a greater measure of the social justice. So what are the justice in the already measures? Will be given. Everybody has to realize it and appreciate the things and follow the things disciplinary and it should be a disciplined way all around the things. So realization is more required uh, for the for the greater measure measures. Greater industrial efficiency also is required because if industry is not efficient then it will be affecting the production of the greater industrial efficiency or much needed. High level of organizational health and effectiveness. Now it is a very prior decision, prior important. After the post-COVID, now we have let me observe the health of the people are hazards uh, due to health hazards. Performance are reduced, a lot of diseases are coming, or they are fatigued, their level of production, uh, effectiveness of activities are less. So, in high level of uh, health awareness and to implement the things, and effectively you have to utilize, implement the of this health scheme is so that is a fine employment now so that effectively it should be effectively employed. so social security is a uh, human right which responds to the which responds to the universal need for the protection against the certain life life rights and the social needs. Social security is the security provided by the worker by the society in situation when earning power is reduced or the worker is no longer able to earn. Because that time the crime will be increased because when the work is not there, uh, earning is not there. So, for the survival of the life, they have to uh, some community activities will be, chances are will be increased. 
So, social, that thing, social security, are they in my security? So, then otherwise, there will be some imbalanced conditions. So, such situations include in, incapacity reasons due to accident, uh, old age. It can be the situation anything because of, because of the old age, there's a no functioner there. So definitely they have to do some wrong thing. And even during the accident, they don't have any capacity to handle these things. So there's the chances of uh, there is some of the uh, not security, but security is actually provided. Means they can survive the situations, maybe in the monetary wise, or maybe in the health wise, or arrangement should be there so that they do not be oriented. For example, when the old age, if a patient's skill is there, then no problem. They can at least they can survive their life. If any accidents has occurred in the ESI hospitals or something, some many insurance, medical insurance are already. Uh, there, then they can also provide these things. So this is the way. Uh, so I have passed a convention, some convention they have passed, that is social security minimum standards they have given some of the uh, convention. In 1952, there is a 102 convention number. When the, uh, during the convention, there are a lot of uh, Rules are standards are uh, approved, or you can say the passed by this passed by the committee. So, in the 1952 the, in the conventions, there some I have passed some of the social security norms. So, minimum standards they have maintained in the regulations. This benefits and the conditions under which they are done. It covers the which are the things that it covers the nine principles branches of the social security uh, they have passed now one name is your medical care then your sickness it means if medical care is required some resolutions has been company employer has to provide some of the things basically uh, then your uh, sickness if you need sickness Leave has to be provided, it may be casual leave, it may be on leave, or medical leave in terms of leave that should be covered. Up. Then unemployment, if any un unemployment is there, there is no job, some sort of stipend or some sort of your amount has to be given so that they can survive more. The old age, maybe some of the pension schemes or some fund has to be generated for them. Employment injury, suppose some accident has due to accident, some leg, leg or hand, any injuries, again this is the minor, minor type or major type, depending on the some compensation packages has to be provided. And family protections, family security also. Then in the women's workers, but the maternity leave are to be granted. In validity, suppose the job has during the job, you now something has happened, he cannot continue his service, he cannot continue so that invalid conditions, what what should be given, what much money, how much money is to be provided, considering his length of service is how much or his family condition the, the ground. All these things are simple so that you can survive. So, all that service, then survival benefits, so all, the key, all these things are as per the IO has passed in the convention 1952. Time to time it is uh, modifying the things, but initially it has passed the minimum standards, still it is maintained. So, okay, thank you very much. And uh, today's session is now is over. So we can continue in the next session. Uh, okay, thank you.